to us a little bit about how and why TV programming funding is changing. There are new players in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. So there are program budgets that each of the PSPs that each broadcasters have to, uh, to fund directly uh, the programmes. And then there are alternative uh, arrangements in place with funding partners, I think we would call them, like Promotion Content Group. Which is uh, part of Group M. Correct. Uh, Cranberry Wood, mm -hmm. uh, Infinitum. All of this, I believe, is connected to the, the change of public how people watch television. Okay. So, uh, you know. We now live in a world where we can fast forward the hours, but equally we live in a world where we can pay to view content that's positioned behind a firewall. And all of these opportunities are, uh, to certain funding partners, are becoming more awkward, uh, uh, looking more um, appetising mm. because they throw up uh, their own opportunities to have kind of like a you know a slice of pie. So it's co-funding is equally as important as kind of brand funding. So this brings into play distributors. This brings into play globally with broadcasters. Brands sometimes come to them, sometimes they, they generate the idea and then the brand is put in. Yeah. Wait, talk a little bit about, more about co-commissioning. This isn't about you selling more products. It's potentially a way for you to own a conversation around a topic mm. yeah. without having to outspend your competitors. But when it comes to brand assets, we always kind of talk about a bespoke suite of assets a client can use across their marketing, PR, and above the line activity. And I think what's come to light over the last three or four years is actually commissioning teams actually are set up to understand that. So as long as we're all managing client expectations and we're working within the Ofcom guidelines, I think it's become a much better process. So we're not coming to you with an idea and show it. We're actually saying, what sort of content do you want to make? How can we co-commission that for it to work for all parties? How does it work with you with, as an indie producer? I mean, uh, what kind of editorial control do you have? We've worked different ways. So we've had shows, we've made Channel 5 that we've funded by Motion Content. We've made shows with Simon where the shows have come to us as a tender and we've pitched for them. But we've also had situations where agencies have come to us directly with a brand or brands have come to us directly. And hmm. um, in the instance where a brand has come to us directly, we've developed an idea with them from the beginning hmm. and then we took it to Simon and we made a show without an agency, which is an interesting experience. Without an agency? <laughs> yeah. Oh, interesting. Um, yeah. When you develop something with the brand or the agency, you get to really bake in the, the values right. into yeah, the idea. Right. Yeah. I think that editorial um, control and independence is really important to make the quality of the programme really good because viewers don't want a 30 minute infomercial. Right. They want to watch something that feels really authentic. Right. Branded content is a big yeah. thing. It's huge. Mm. It's massive. Yeah. Everybody yeah. in this room probably made branded content, but branded entertainment is a sort of a quality, a, an entertainment subset of that. And that's what we we at Channel 4, you know, really subscribe to and want to do on every project we work with a brand. Effectively, what we do with programs like um, uh, uh, Gogglebox is license it to make ads. Mm -hmm. So if you, you know, make a show with us, an entertainment show, you can then take those assets uh, and take that IP and create advertising. So make a campaign out of it. Don't just think of a television mm -hmm. show. That's the kind of right. set, because that's a must-watch, so kind of seek-out content. Right. Go back to what advertising is. is saying something through the editorial yeah. and selling using the uh, kind of halo assets that the other content are coming out of. We want everything to have a life beyond TX, right? Mm -hmm. So we're creating programs that have IP and we want the brand to be involved in that IP as we go forward. So when we made our driving school show, we've, that's been made in five other territories around the world and the brand have an option to fund it in those territories. Mm -hmm. And traditionally, on the terms of trade, these would be buyouts. Mm. So you'd, they'd be attended from a channel and you'd be thinking, do I want to take them my best idea? Because actually, right. it will just be gone and I won't yep. get to exploit yeah. it. Right. And now, actually, things are evolving. You will take your best idea to be funded by a brand because actually yeah. you can make that show exactly how you want to make it. So I talk to us a little bit about um, the kind of uh, different platforms and devices and social sites that you're, you're thinking about. And how does technology change or add to? Good content aligns with people's emotions and passion points. Mm -hmm. I think over the last 10 years, we've seen broadcasters make huge advancements in their tech, you know, be it from 4K to kind of Sky Plus, etc. All of that stuff has happened. Now, what we are seeing now is um, actually voice is a huge part of what we do. And I think most broadcasters now are working on or have a facility for someone to quite literally speak into a handset 
and be served all the content thereafter. Please join me in thanking Simon Wells, Sajazir, Emily Hunt and Greg Barnett.